Hi, my name is Amanda Ziva. Welcome to my channel, Learning with a Word Nerd, and another First Chapter Friday video. This week, I'm going to be sharing the first chapter of One for the Murphys by Linda Mullaly Hunt with you. And actually, when I was thinking about it this morning, I can't believe it's taken me this long to share this book with you because it is one of my all-time favorites for middle schoolers. Um, but I specifically waited till May because May is Foster Care Awareness Month and I thought it would be the perfect fit uh, because the main character in this story um, lives in a foster care family. And I know we talk a lot about diversity in literature and I think that this book is a great way to highlight a diverse kind of family situation. Um, I know as a middle school teacher, I had a lot of students that personally connected with this story um, and it made a profound impact on their life because they hadn't seen a kid in a living situation like theirs in a book before and for the first time um, they could really connect to a character like Carly. Um, it's also a great book for May because once you as a reader fall in love with Linda Mullaly Hunt, um, you're going to be able to find tons of other books by this author to enjoy all throughout the summer. So without further ado, I'm going to read the back so you know a little bit what this story is about and then read the first chapter. If you are new to my channel, I want to let you know that I have been doing this every week for the entire year of 2021. So we are up to, I think, like 20 different First Chapter Friday videos. Uh, they release every Friday. I'm going to put the playlist in the description box for you below. So if you want to check out some of my other favorite books for middle school readers uh, and get your taste in the first chapter Friday, they will be there for you. 12-year-old Carly Connors can take a lot. Growing up in Las Vegas with her fun-loving mother, she's learned to be tough, but she's never expected a betrayal that would land her in foster care. When she's placed with the Murphys, a lively family with three boys, she's blindsided. Mrs. Murphy makes her feel seen and heard for the first time. Then, just when she starts to believe she could truly be one of the Murphys, News from her mother shakes her world. Linda Mullaly Hunt's moving stories will stay with readers long after they finish it. Chapter one is titled Lucky Girl. Sitting in the back of the social worker's car, I try to remember how my mother has always said to never show your fear. She'd be disappointed to see me now, shaking, just going without a fight. The social worker, Mrs. McAvoy, pulls out of the hospital parking lot while I play with the electric lock button on her car. Lock. Unlock. Lock. Unlock. She glares at me in the mirror and says, Please stop that. The door needs to stay locked. I love it when people use the word please, but they sound like they want to remove your face. I stop, but I'm not doing it to bug her like she thinks. I just can't keep still. And it beats jumping out of a moving car. My fingers play with my hospital bracelet. I stare at my name. Carly Connors. Thirteen letters. How unlucky can one person be? I think about my mother, still there, lying in her hospital bed like an eggplant. I wonder if she's conscious yet. I wonder why no one will tell me what's happening with her, and I wonder why I can't seem to ask anymore. Gazing out the window, I count the trees. Connecticut is covered with them, but in March the branches are still bare, like long gray fingers waving us along as we speed by. We're almost there, Mrs. McAvoy says, taking a corner faster than I think any social worker is supposed to. I think back to sitting in that hospital bed, bunching the blanket up in my fists, asking her if they are going to send me to an orphanage. We don't call them orphanages anymore, she'd said, shaking her head and laughing. <laughs> like that was the point? Now I'm trapped in her car, going to a place she's chosen. After what my stepfather has done, I'm terrified thinking about what kind of foster house I may land in the things that could happen to me. I think of the Little Mermaid mural near the nurse's station, how the Tooth Fairy gave me that CD when I was seven and my mother let me get up to listen when I found it under my pillow at midnight. We danced around the kitchen together and she sang, kiss the girls, as she chased me to get a kiss. I never once ran away for real. You know, Mrs. McAvoy says, pulling me back to reality, you're very lucky, Carly. You're kidding me, right? Her mouth bunches up. Well, she sounds like a ticking bomb. It's a nice home. A good placement. You are lucky. Guess I should buy a lottery ticket then. Someday, Carly, you're going to have to realize that being angry at the whole world only hurts you. I wonder if that isn't the point. We drive up to a house that's the color of dirt. Tall, thin trees surround it like guards on a watch. 
There's a 6-6 on the mailbox. A palindrome. Mrs. McAvoy opens the car door for me. This is a very nice family car, Lee. She puts emphasis on my name as if to give me a warning. And this is the first time they've taken a foster child. I know this is her way of telling me to be a good girl. The walk up the driveway feels like wading through glue. I've read the book and seen the movies. I know what foster parents are like. They smoke cigars and feed you saltines for breakfast. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine. Standing on the porch, I count the leaves on the plastic wreath that hangs on the door. The bright redness of the flowers reminds me of the swirling lights of the ambulance. I have a vague memory of my mother screaming for me and my own voice trying to yell for her and the taste of blood. I remember that. I remember the blinding pain surging through my body and then feeling nothing at all, wondering if a person like me would go to heaven. I jump when the door swings open and a woman smiles. She's the kind of person you'd never look at twice. Her hair is shoulder length, straight, and different shades of brown. Her blue v-neck sweater matches her eyes and she wears a silver leaf necklace and plaid pants. I mean, plaid pants. She holds out her hand. Hello, Carly. How nice to meet you. I'm Julie Murphy. I can't reach back. Even the name feels fake. Too perky. I wonder why she's happy to meet me. I wonder how much she knows, and I hope that I do not like her. Then this whole thing gets even worse. Mrs. Murphy steps to the side. Behind her stand three boys. The smallest one runs over, stretching up his hand toward his mother, and she swoops him up. I can't stay here. I'm probably here to be a living babysitter or modern-day Cinderella. The oldest boy looks at me like he wants to wrap me in carpet and leave me on the curb. I haven't cried since my mother told me she was going to marry Dennis. That was 384 days ago, but I want to cry now. His mother tips her head to the side and holds my gaze until I just can't look anymore. I hear her soft voice. Why don't you come in, Carly? The next chapter is called The First Step, and I know that if you choose to pick up this book, you are just going to fall in love with it. So um, I will put links for everything down in the description box. You can grab your copy and check out other work by Linda Mullaly Hunt and any of the other First Chapter Friday videos. Happy reading, and uh, I hope to see you back here again next week.